Today we're talking about perforated Z closures used for ridge venting details. We're gonna discuss different styles and Sheffield Metals recommendations. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we're talking about perforated Z closures. Tell me out, I've got Jason and Jeff from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Thanks for being here, guys. So tell me first what a Z closure is uh, and where it goes on a roof system before we get started talking about perforations and things like that. So the Z closure is the flashing that is installed over the panel to close off the void between the panel ribs and the ridge cap or hip cap. And so what we're talking about here today is that Z closure created with perforations uh, to, as part of a ridge venting detail or some kind of venting detail. So tell us again what, what that looks like and why people use that. So using a uh, perforated Z closure is a way to allow air to escape, you know, say an attic condition where, you know, uh, air is being pulled in from the soffit and getting pushed out through the cut in the roof. Um, a perforated Z closure will allow the hot air to escape in those situations um, and allow the attic space or the above sheathing ventilation to, to, to vent, basically. It's done by taking that solid Z closure that Jason was describing and basically putting a bunch of holes in it. So when it comes to using a perforated Z closure uh, as your venting detail, what does Sheffield Metals recommend when it comes to that, Jeff? Can you talk to that? Yeah, so Sheffield doesn't recommend uh, using a perforated Z closure in any of its installations. You know, again, as Jason described, it's it's a piece of metal there to close off a void. It's there to stop debris, water. It's a primary defense of keeping your system watertight. So to take and punch a bunch of holes in that um, is really kind of counterproductive to what we see as far as uh, a venting option, especially when, you know, I'm sure as we'll discuss later, there, there are other products out there made to be used in venting situations, you know, designed and tested to be watertight and things like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure other manufacturers might have that in their installation guidelines, but for uh, Sheffield, it's not recommended. So one of the reasons why we bring up this topic is this detail is used a lot. To that point, it seems like there wouldn't be just one single way to perforate a Z closure. It sounds like there's some different options out there. You guys see that as well? Yeah, no, there's several different ways. And, and quite honestly, one of the ways and one of the reasons it's used a lot is it's because it's something the contractor can do on their own without having to buy extra accessories and things like that, which, I mean, honestly, you know, venting products can, you know, raise the cost of the jobs. And, you know, too, especially nowadays, you might have long lead times on getting materials. So, you know, I think one of the reasons it's popular is because something they can do on their own and it doesn't hold up jobs or raise costs. So, you know, definitely understand that part of it. There's different ways that, you know, we've seen it done before. Obviously, I think our biggest concern is, is when you just bent the face of it, uh, you perforate the face of it, and then that's it, you know? So basically, I mean, you, there, there's holes between you and the inside of your roof system, which, you know, I've seen it where the face is vented and they'll put some type of mesh material on the back of it themselves um, to try to block anything that could get through those holes, you know? So that's, that's a little bit better. There's details out there, which is probably the best venting detail I've seen as far as perforating a Z, where instead of venting the face of the Z closure, they hit run the top of it long. They'll vent the top of the Z closure so air can come in. But as wind driven rain and things like that hit the face of it, it's not being driven into there because it's still solid. So the face of it up top is vented here. And then they'll have another piece that comes in kind of as a backup section. Um, that's also vented. So where if anything does get through the, the holes in the top, hopefully it gets stopped uh, by the holes, um, you know, as a, as a secondary precaution and won't let any water or things like that infiltrate the system. Cause you got to remember, you know, if you have a vented ridge cap or, or a system like that, it's vented because you basically have plywood or whatever type of decking of the ridge of your roof cut out. So there's a big hole. So, you know, any, any, little bit of moisture, things like that can become a concern because you don't have the secondary precautions of underlayments and deckings and things like that. You know, it's going to be wide open. So those are, those are ways we've seen, I've seen contractors um, manufacture these types of perforated Z closure products themselves 
Um, you know, there are companies out there that sell perforated disease products. And uh, Jason could talk a little bit more about, you know, some options that we've seen, you know, as far as pre-manufactured product when it comes to perforated disease. Yeah, I believe there are some uh, higher end or upper end perforated metals that, that go the extra mile uh, to ensure quality and um, to avoid moisture intrusion. Two things you really want to look out for is over venting or under venting uh, to make sure you're getting the proper airflow. So there are manufacturers that will list uh, their, their testings, you know, that are rated for 110 mile an hour uh, wind ratings, um, you know, TAS 100. And they'll show the calculations for the air movement in their system. So you're not just blindly perforating a metal and hoping it bends. We're, we're actually getting some calculated results. Yeah, no, that's a good point because, you know, as we talked about in previous videos, you know, if you don't know how much air you're moving, then, then you don't know how the system's going to perform. You know, it's just like when we talk about engineering and things like that, if it's not tested and you don't have the calculation skill with it, you're flying blind, basically, like Jason said. So it might overperform, <laughs> which might not be a good thing, or it might underperform, which might not be a good thing. And, uh, you know, obviously that can cause issues in your system or just not, you might not be getting all the, um, the performance out of the roof system that you need or that you expected. So what other factors do we need to consider when it comes to perforated Z closures? I think the, one of the biggest concerns is moisture intrusion. You want to think about the pitch of your roof that your vented Z closure is being installed on. Are you in snow country? Is there the potential for ice damming or heavy rain that could potentially back up and infiltrate your roof? The other two that come to mind when I think about it is um, your manufacturer's material warranty. So the company that's going to be selling you the majority of your metal, if you decide to go with a pre-manufactured product, um, you know, we're talking about that's out there. You got to remember that your manufacturer's material warranty isn't going to cover material that it didn't supply. So um, if you buy your Z closures from someplace else, you know, just keep in mind that your manufacturer's warranty isn't going to carry over onto those Z closures as well. The other, the other thing I would consider again with, you know, pre-manufactured products is um, the type of material and the gauge are being made out of, you know, we always recommend that the trim and be made out of the same roofing material as, uh, you know, same gauge of roofing material as the roof panels are made out of. So, you know, if you have a 24 gauge roof, you, you know, we recommend you have 24 gauge trim all the way around. Um, that might not be the case with some manufacturers and what they have to offer as far as their gauges, and, you know, galvanized versus galvalume and things like that. So if you're going to be going with some of those products, you know, you want to make sure you research them, um, what their slope limitations are, um, materials, warranties, things like that. If Sheffield Metals doesn't recommend perforated Z closures for ridge venting details, what do you recommend? You know, what would you approve for a weather type warranty? Yes, at this time, we are recommending the Coravent V600T or V600TE for snow environments, winter environments. It's a reliable product designed to keep moisture out while venting out of the air cavity or your attic cavity. So how is it different than a perforated Z? What, what does it actually look like? One of, one of the main differences between the V600 and a perforated Z closure is that this product sits on top of the Z closure. Number one, so you know you you automatically have whatever your seam height is up off the deck, and that's pretty important, especially when you're talking about lower slope applications and things like that. Um, you know, another thing too is you know one of the things we talked about being important was knowing the cubic air uh, movement of a product. Uh, they've done all the calculations. They have recommended installation details. And again, like Jason said, it's designed to keep moisture out while letting the airflow out of the system. We use it on. Basically, every job that requires uh, a weather type warranty that has a vented ridge, this is this is the detail we use. We used it on the uh, installation over at Adam's house uh, that we did one of the installation videos on. You know, it's it's our recommended go to product, and you know we trust it fully for to, for it to perform, and that's why we use it so often in so many applications. So if you're putting something on top of your Z closure, that's going to make it more bulky, right? I mean, you're not going to be able to rivet your ridge cap straight to your Z closures anymore. No, you're correct. It does have a it does have a larger uh, ridge cap that goes on. It is it is held down with exposed fasteners per our detail and their recommended detail. You know, one of the things is you know 
the fasteners are painted. So hopefully it does, you know, blend in with the roof a little bit more, but you know, when it comes down to it, what you might lose a little bit aesthetics wise, you know, I think you more than gain back tenfold with uh, performance, you know, I mean, honestly, that just that warm and fuzzy knowing that it's done correctly and that you shouldn't have any problems later on down the road uh, with what metal roofing costs and, you know, the different items that can go wrong to it, uh, you know, as far as water infiltration and things like that, you know, this is, this is pretty much to me an easy pick, uh, just as far as security and performance of not only your venting system, but, you know, keeping water from intruding into the, to the building or the, uh, residence itself. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Um, some good information on perforated Z closures and some other options when it comes to ridge venting details. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I'd love to hear them. Uh, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.